so like, tell us about uh, what is your connection to comics and so on? Were you a fan of comics when you grew up, or were you a big nerd? I, mean, uh, um, I was a nerd. I was a different kind of a nerd. Uh, I was sort of uh, kept away from a lot of popular media. I remember being really into the Linda Carter Wonder Woman uh, in a very uh, sort of you know, proto-psychosexual way, and then at a certain point my parents tried to brainwash me into thinking that, like, television was evil, and then there's a story that, like, at a certain point somebody asked me about TV, and I said, Wonder Woman, want your brains, because I was, like, believed that, like, if, I wasn't Amish or anything like that, but I still believed that, like, somehow, so then, you know, I didn't really watch television for the rest of my childhood, and so I read books, and it was terrible. And so, you know, it wasn't until, like, I was actually, like, working in entertainment that I actually, like, bought a television and started, like, watching things. So I had a lot of catching up to do. So what do your parents think of your success now? I... they pretend... no, they're happy. They're, they're totally happy. Um, I don't know if they understand the shows. They, they like... I don't know if they're the demo for this. But they know you work in television and you're successful. Um... <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, it was just, I was, you know, I was like a classics major in college, so I think they thought I was going to be a professor instead of writing superhero stories, but you know, you never know which way life is going to go. It's time so when, for a lot of them, right? Exactly. All that mythology, exactly. like, actually, yeah, I really think that, like, seeing, like, Clash of the Titans, like, when I was a little kid and being into, you know, I think the reason I became a classics major was because of Indiana Jones and doing this show that has, like, that intersection of, you know, Vandal Savage and sort of, you know, uh, I mean, that is my sweet spot where it's, like, history mixed up with the mystical, mixed up with, like, time. You know, the fact that we have time travel on the show is, like, beautiful for me because you can go back to the 30s and have Nazi bad guys and you can have, uh, you know, ancient artifacts with mystical powers and I mean, it, I, I just to me this, this show is like a dream come true. When yeah. did you shoot that teaser with everyone in it because you haven't shot the pilot? Yeah, I was not even involved in the show when that happened. Um, that was uh, that was done in the early uh, winter, late winter, early spring. Uh, Dermot Downs, one of our directors who's going to continue on in series, I think shot that in the course of an evening uh, up on a rooftop in in in, in Vancouver. Um, so like I actually I saw that as a fan before I was actually part of this, um, which is a very surreal process where you you know we don't have a pilot yet, um, and so we're talking about something that only exists kind of in a theoretical world. All the oh, so far all the Warner Brothers DC titles have tended to be single hero yes. pieces. Yeah, you're dealing with an ensemble n n with no one necessarily being the center point, being a yeah. superstar piece. What, yeah. what, how do you how do you kind of gather that group and how do you manage them as a group and how do you tell their story? Yeah, you know I think the fun is like in not managing them. You know, in what little I've written so far, part of the joy is just in the in the, in the tug of war that's going on because you know Rip Hunter assembles this team, but he assembles a team of. Uh, you know, good guys, bad guys, mixed up people, and it is like herding cats, and there is no, you know, there's something, it's not like the normal sort of Justice League, you know, we're all shoulder to shoulder, it really is this sort of like amorphous sliding alliances, people who have their own agendas, and you know, to me that's the real fun of the show, in that um, it's always going to be sort of shifting sands, like you never really know, if you travel in time, we're purportedly going back to stop Vandal Savage and save the world, but you know, have people like Leonard Snart, who, you know, if they're in 1970s, it's like, you know, I might rob a bank, or like, I might go... Uh, you know, try to write some, you know, if, if Ray Palmer was like, oh, my fiancé was murdered, maybe I'll try to, like, change my own future. And so part of the fun is that everybody's trying to be, you know, Rip's trying to, to marshal everybody to the, the sort of, the vandal, the vanquishing vandal, but at the same time when you're traveling in time, like, who, who could resist being able to sort of, to, to change, you know, your own, your own future, so that when you get back there, you know, life is different. Yeah. Um, he says in the promo, I'm a member of the Time Masters, yeah. which is very different than Rip Hunter Time Master. Are we going to see any of the others? We are. We are going to see, and you know, part of the fun with Rip, uh, as with the other characters, is um, the, the story that we hear in the pilot is, is, is the onion that we sort of unfold and realize that, you know, he 
has a you know a vested interest in, in in taking down Vandal, and he maybe you know the the Time Masters uh, aren't always going to be you know his agenda and the Time Masters isn't always going to be like in perfect concert. So you know this really is about it's like the Dirty Dozen. It, it is is it is a show about like a motley ragtag bunch of like f ups who are like responsible with you know saving the future of the world and you know for me the fun is like when they go back in time and they're trying to do something to stop Vandal they'll accidentally or purposefully screw up the future in such a way that like it, it's like we become our own enemy you know the butterfly effect of what happens if you know you do something that has these unforeseeable consequences in the future and so it's not just about like shit stopping Van Vandal Savage in 200 years it's like oh man how do we fix what we screwed up in the last episode because like when we look into the future you realize that like World War 3 is on the horizon because of something that we did and you know I really like having super flawed effed up heroes because they're just so much more fun than the sort of square jaw perfect ones Ryan we still have three major mysteries one you got that who's playing Metal Salad yep. two what is up with Jay Jackson and three what is his plan so yeah. can you give us okay to all these three mysteries can you give us one new head that has not been seen in an interview before well you're my first interview so this will that, that'll be easy um Oh man, the talking points are so friggin' limited. Um, okay, uh, do, do you have a man for battle yet? Do we have a... An actor for battle yet? We don't. I mean, we certainly have somebody in mind that if we don't get, I'll be sorely disappointed. But you know, the thing with the show is that, like, we have such an incredible ensemble that... You know, I almost don't want to take away from the whatever eight of us that we've already cast. And, and, and I think as we go episode to episode, we will kind of become our own worst enemies. I mean, we will have characters who die. We'll have characters who betray the team. We'll have characters who are left behind in time. You know, so there will be the mythological bad guy, but I think week to week... Um, we will be focusing on the faces that you already know because, like, goddamn, we've got a great cast, and like, to not use them to their fullest would be like crazy. So, I think that is a big mystery still because we have not seen anything of him, and we have of that many such so It's like, yeah, what can you say about Jay Dagan at all? Um, you know, I will say he's probably the last person that Professor Stein wanted to share Firestorm with. You know, I mean. I mean, like I said, it's for me. It's all about tension and interpersonal um, uh, friction. So, like, it, this isn't the normal superhero story where everybody's like on the same team, like pushing in the same direction. It's really about us sort of turning on ourselves and whether we can like learn to get along in order to save the world. Will uh, Rip Hunter be a uh, regular or a recurring character? Absolutely, he'll be in every episode, and um, it's actually too bad that Arthur's not here. You know? Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I, I agree. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Theatrically, yeah. DC has Suicide Squad coming. So, can you maybe talk about what, whether you think the, the notion of the hero is darkening for some reason? Your your ensemble I mean, is not an ensemble of traditional right. DC right. super goody heroes, yeah. and, and Suicide Squad is reflective of the same trend theatrically. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I I, I agree. I mean, you know, not that our show is the sort of dark, though. I mean, I, in a weird way, I think this is going to be the most comedic of the, you know, Berlanti shows, um, because they are adults with really, you know, I mean, I think Ray Palmer is hilarious. I think Leonard Snart, in his own way, is hilarious. I think, like, trying to force, like, you know, Victor Barber's Professor Stein onto a spaceship with, you know this motley crew of people, like, it's, 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 it, I don't want to say, like, it's not sitcom, but it is, like, it's, it's a romp, it's a caper, it's, like, to me, it's, like, Oceans, where you have, like, this crazy team of people that shouldn't be working together except for their, like, their, their, like, stated goal, but it's, like, the way things go wrong is, is, like, to me, that's the goal of, of this show, and so, like, it's, yeah, you're right, it's, it, it's not goody-goody, like, let's all save the world, but to me, it's, like, 
there's a lightness to it in tone that there's a, a you know there's a real like there's a real fun I mean it's so much fun to write it's so much fun I mean it's like the other you know I've worked on Chuck and Veronica Mars and shows that you know have got a real darkness to them but they've, they've also got a, a sense of humor or, or at least like sardonic snarky wit and, and to me these characters that's how they sat in my head yeah